I'd like to uh, give you a um, brief summary of what we learned last time, and then and then we'll move on. So uh, last time we started to discuss about uh, the basic mathematical uh, techniques that is required to learn electromagnetism. So uh, the first one is vector analysis, and we learned. Uh, what are what is scalar and what is vector and then how uh, what is field and how to multiply two vectors and how to add two vectors and and these are all elementary things right addition vector addition vector subtraction I think you are already very familiar with these concepts and um, and then uh, after these uh, basic things vector products. Uh, we started to learn about uh, the vector differential operator. And then uh, the first thing we learned is gradient. And as I said, uh, in order to understand the gradient, uh, you need to think about like a multidimensional function space. Okay, so if you have a function uh, that has a um, multivariable, then you can always uh, draw the, the topology of, or, or the um, you know, uh, topography of the function like this. And then if somebody asks you, uh, what is the slope of this function at this point, for instance, like at, the, at, at this point, uh, your answer of course, depends on which direction you want to go, right? So if you want to go along this direction to, to the top of the mountain, uh, your slope would be very high. But if you want to go like perpendicular direction, then your slope would be zero, right? So in order to define slope uh, for multidimensional uh, functions, you need a vector quantity, which is called a gradient of that function, okay? So the gradient of that function, um, the interpretation is that you have direction, that is the, uh, the maximum, the direction of maximum increase of uh, the scalar function V, and the magnitude is the maximum slope uh, you know, itself uh, of V, okay? So like these are two uh, uh, examples. So if you have a mountain uh, with a top at the center, then your gradient is supposed to have this uh, arrows, right? So it, its direction, of course, it's heading towards uh, the direction of maximum increase of V and the magnitude itself tells you about the maximum slope, right? And then here, uh, this is just, uh, um, you know, this is lower region, low region, and this is high region. And then, and then you have a slope in X direction and along Y direction, you have no slope at all, right? So again, uh, the, gradient, the gradient is about slope, okay? And then uh, math, uh, the, the usage in physics is that gradient connects field to a uh, force field to a potential scalar potential field. So um, why this is useful? Well, this is useful because I'm not, uh, because I'm going to cover this later in, in actual class, but, uh, but the reason why this is useful is because vector has three quantities in order to define, right? Fx, Fy, Fz, right? So it's kind of complicated to, to manipulate, right? But U, the potential is just, uh, requires just one number in order to describe it. So, dealing with potential is, is much easier than dealing with a vector field. So in that sense, expressing vector field as a, uh, uh, you know, the gradient of a potential is useful because potential is easy to, easy to deal with mathematically. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to divergence and curl. So today we will learn about divergence and curl and uh, so the motivation here is uh, this. If you have a vector, vector field, how to describe uh, uh, generation 
and rotation of a vector field. So uh, as I said, like uh, in, in the last part of the last lecture, this vector field doesn't show any, any special thing. It just flows from left to right, nothing special. But uh, let's say this is your point of interest and this is your point of interest. Then this point uh, is some, has something special, right? From this point, vector flow, vector fields are generated, right? So that uh, if you like ask what's special about this point P, you can say, okay, a vector flow is generating, okay, generated by, uh, from, from this point. So, and then also, if you look at this uh, vector field, the vector field obviously is rotating clockwise, right? So it had, it, and, and, and this rotation is kind of a special, special thing. It's not like a regular vector field. So you can come up uh, with uh, some quantity, vector quantity uh, that can describe the generation or the rotation of the vector field. And I would say uh, divergence is about the generation of the vector field. So let me tell you uh, why this is the case. But before then, uh, let me just let's just look at the definition first. So if you have a vector vector field A as a function of x, y, z, uh, then the uh, Cartesian coordinate definition of the divergence is is this: it's a partial A x the partial derivative of A along x direction, partial derivative of A y along y direction, the partial derivative of A z along z direction, and add them up. That is the definition of divergence in Cartesian coordinate. But this definition uh, is actually not, well, it's useful in, in, in calculating this quantity. But the thing is, if you go to other, uh, other another, uh, coordinate system, this definition doesn't work. Like for instance, you know, uh, uh, R theta phi or uh, R uh, uh, rho, rho uh, phi z, like cylindrical coordinate or spherical coordinate systems. In these coordinate systems, you cannot calculate the uh, divergence of A like Like you cannot do this, okay? So in these coordinate systems, divergence cannot calculate by this simple formula. So then, then what is the coordinate independent definition of this, uh, this thing? The coordinate independent definition is this, okay? So the divergence of A uh, is like, say, uh, let's say you have a uh, point of interest the point that you want to evaluate the, the divergence, then uh, what you need to do is to take a small volume, delta V, okay? And then if you define the small volume, you can automatically define their boundary, right? The boundary is the surface of the volume, which is S, right? And then you calculate the vector field dot ds, okay? And then here the ds is this, like you have, um, you have an infinitesimal surface, surface component, and then uh, the direction of the surface component is always defined as the outside, like the outside of the surface, from inside to the outside of the surface. So ds has infinitesimal surface component with this direction. So you have a you take a dot product with a, which basically gives you the vector flux going out through this small surface, and then you add them up for the entire surface. Okay, so what this thing uh, defines is the 
the vector flux going out through this volume, right? And then you divide that quantity by delta V, the, vol the volume of this uh, uh, infinitesimal, the volume uh, amount of the infinitesimal volume. And then you take a limitation, like you take a limit that delta V goes to zero. So you make your volume smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then this quantity uh, will converge to some value, right? And that is coordinate independent definition of uh, uh, the divergence of A, okay? So uh, before we uh, talk uh, more about why this is important, like how to interpret this definition, let's first uh, look at why these two are the same, right? Because that's important thing. So we, you, we have two definitions. So we need, to, we need to show that these are actually the same thing, right? So let's do that. Um, so this is a lot of uh, equations. I don't want to bring uh, many equations uh, in one slide, but uh, I think this is useful, especially, uh, this is not that much useful for now, but this will be very useful uh, when you learn the divergence in spherical coordinate or cylindrical coordinate systems. So let's, uh, you know, try to follow uh, my derivation here. So what we want to do is uh, we want to calculate the divergence of A at this point, right? So how we set the, uh, how are we gonna set the, uh, uh, the infinitesimal volume? Well, Cartesian coordinate systems, it is, uh, it is natural to choose a box, rectangular box, right? As, an, uh, as a volume, okay? And this box has dx, dy, and dz side length. And of course, uh, so dv is just dx multiplied by dy, dz. This is trivial thing. And then if you want to calculate this thing, the surface integral of a dot ds, you want to calculate all these faces, right? So the top, front, back, left, right, top, bottom surfaces, and add them up, you get the answer, right? And, and because this is just a tedious process, let's just try to do uh, one thing, front and back, okay? So we want to focus on this surface, which is front side and that surface, which is back side, okay? So uh, if you look at the front and back, if you want to calculate a dot ds, uh, and then uh, the convenient property is that uh, your volume is infinitesimally small, right? It's very, very, very small. So you don't need to worry too much about the variation of a vector A uh, or the component of A uh, within this, you know, uh, uh, this area. So what you need to do is that you can approximate this integration as just a multiplication of a vector A evaluated at this point, the center of the surface multiplied by the area amount. Right, so the area amount is dy dz, dy, dy dz, right? So area is given. And then, uh, and then ds, again, the ds is the vector, so infinitesimal surface vector. And as I said before, the direction of the surface is always from inside to outside. So, because, so if you, know that then the direction of this, the front side is in this direction, right? Positive X direction. And of course, the direction of the back side would be negative X direction. And then you have to uh, evaluate the, uh, the X, I'm sorry, A 
at the center of the surface. And because you have a dot product and then your surface is X direction, you don't need to worry about other component, but X, right? So you, all you need to keep is the X component of the A, of the vector A. So AX evaluated at this point, okay? So Y zero, Z zero. So Y, so this is Y zero, Z zero, and X zero plus DX divided by two. So uh, can everyone understand why you have X one, X zero plus DX divided by two? Why, why this term is added? Everyone uh, get this point because the vector A has to be evaluated at the center of the front surface, right? Not the center of the volume. So center of the volume has X zero, Y zero, Z zero coordinate. And then center of the front surface is of course, uh, DX divided by two in front of the center of the uh, volume, right? So you have uh, this dx divided by two. Okay, and similarly, if you do the same thing for the back side, uh, everything's the same, but you have uh, two differences. One is that uh, the direction of surface is flipped. So you have a negative sign. And second, you have to evaluate the vector ax, the vector component ax at different position because the center of the backside uh, is x0 minus dx divided by two, y0, z0, right? So if you add them up, so front and back, uh, it, will be, it, it will look like this, right? And then uh, you multiply dx here and divide dx in front, then you can see that this term is actually partial derivative of AX evaluated uh, at X zero, Y zero, Z zero, right? You see that you, you can see what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is like F X plus DX divided by two minus F X minus DX divided by two and divided by DX this is nothing but df dx, right? Evaluated at, uh, at x0. So this thing applies here. And similarly, uh, if you uh, do the same thing for all other surfaces, left and right, so left, left and right gives you this partial derivative of AY along Y direction. And then top and bottom gives you a Z component like AZ, uh, DAZ, DZ, right? So if you add them up, uh, you have all components, AX, DX, AY, DY, AZ, DZ, right? And then you have DX, DY, DZ. And you divide it by Delta V. Delta V is also dx, dy, dz. So you, these just uh, uh, will be di uh, divided. And then you have this, this uh, value, okay? So the, the definition, this definition uh, and, and, and this uh, Cartesian coordinate uh, definition are equivalent. Right. So let me know if anything is unclear uh, up to this point. I, I don't think everyone can understand this in a, in a very short time. So uh, let me know if, if anything is unclear here. Unclear. Anything is unclear in this derivation.
Okay, so everyone thinks that this is easy enough? That's, that's good. Oh, okay. So Yi Chung Pil uh, asks a question. Uh, so uh, on the third line, this line, there is ds is dy dz ax, but other equations does not have equal sign, but similar sign. Is there any problem when we change all those similar sign into uh, equal sign? Oh, oh, similar sign. Oh, okay. So I guess you're talking about this, right? So, so yeah. So uh, yes, yes. This is a good question. And then uh, the reason why I said this uh, this approximation. Uh, it's because, of course, uh, the integration of a dot ds uh, along on the, the front surface requires actual um, complicated evaluation. But we know that in the end, we want to make dx, dy, dz infinitesimally small, right? And then shrink it, to, it into a, just a point. So at at that in in that limit, we know that this is actually equal, right? It doesn't matter whether you actually calculate this, uh, uh, this this uh, in a in a uh, full precision, but you can just evaluate a at the center and then multiply its area. So they are the basically equivalent in the limit of dx dz is uh, infinitesimally small. So. Um, if you ask any any problem, um, there's there's no problem actually. There's no problem as long as you uh, you uh, make everything uh, go into the uh, infinitesimal limit. But that was a good question. Thanks for asking question. And the Tresen Yun asks, uh, I have a question. I can't understand what a exactly mean. It's just one vector or a group of vectors. Okay, so that's an interesting question too. And then uh, the, the vector A is just a vector field, right? So vector field means, uh, as I said uh, in earlier in the, uh, in the lecture, vector field means a vector quantity that is defined at every position on the space. So if your position is changed, the vector becomes, uh, you basically have a different vector. So that's the definition of a, a vector, uh, vector uh, field. So A is a vector field. And then uh, Chong Hyun uh, said, Chong Hyun said, uh, can I listen to explanation about minus sign in back part again? Yeah, that, that's also a good question. So uh, it, this is related with the definition of the surface vector. So let's say, uh, let's say uh, you have a box and this is P and then let's say this is the front surface and this is the back surface, okay? And then, and then this is your X axis. And then uh, for, a, uh, for a closed volume, the vector, the surface vector direction is always defined from inside to outside. So, so the front surface has the direction like this, and the back surface has direction like this. And then for instance, the top surface has a direction like this, and the bottom is like that, okay? And that's the reason why uh, the front surface direction is AX and the back surface direction is minus AX. I think that, becomes uh, the answer to your question. And then uh, uh, I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce properly. Fa fak fakri. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the correct way to. Yeah, yeah it's the correct way. Okay, Fakri. Okay, good. So, so uh, in which part did we consider limit? How did we use a uh, limit operator here? Didn't we just wrote Delta? Oh, right. So, so th that's a good question. And I think I already answered that uh, question uh, 
while addressing the first, the, the, the previous questions. Here, we uh, use the uh, limit, right? I mean, these approximations can only be valid and if, I mean, these become uh, on, on equality only in the limit where dx, dy, dz are infinitesimally small, right? So, so in that sense, uh, this, uh, the limit has been used. Okay. And then uh, Yi sang -hoo. yeah, Yi sang, Yi sang -hoo. So Yi sang -hoo, is this the, a question or this is answering uh, to other, the, the previous question? I guess, uh, uh, okay, okay, good, good. So this is not a new question, good. And E. Uh, Chungpil asks, uh, what I want to say is statement S, DS is the DZ, uh, D, uh, DS is equals, equal to DY, DZ, AX has hidden statement DY and DZ, x is infinitesimally close to zero so that sign should change to equal sign okay okay well anyway that's the clarification so okay good so any other question uh related to uh, related to this derivation i guess this does if this is not too difficult to follow right it's all I did is just to uh, uh, take infinitesimally small box, right? And then applying these uh, definition for uh, each faces of the box and then add them up and then just showing uh, the equality between the, this definition and, and that definition. And then we are gonna do the same thing for uh, uh, spherical coordinates and the cylindrical coordinates later in uh, in the next next lecture or next next lecture, and then you will see why uh, the definition uh, changes. Uh, you know, if you go to yeah, so, but that's the that's yeah that will be covered later uh, in the class. So, um, so so you have divergence again. Let's look at this equation again. So so divergence. Uh, is defined like this. So this part just gives you the integrated outward vector flux, right? So vector trying to escape uh, a certain point. So for instance, let's uh, think about this case. If you set your volume like this and then evaluate this quantity, then, then what would be, so this quantity must be positive number, right? Because, because you have a volume and then your surface direction and your vector field direction is parallel, right? And then if you, if you perform an integration, you should have positive number, positive finite number, non-zero number, right? So in this case, uh, you know that your divergence must be some positive number. And then here, if you do the same thing, your uh, surface vector direction and uh, uh, vector field direction are opposite. So if you evaluate this, you will have non-zero negative number, right? And then in this case, if you do the same thing, you can see here in the upper part, your uh, surface direction and the vector direction are basically the same, but the lower part, it's the opposite. So if you perform the integration, 
the upper integration cancels out the lower integration. So you will end up have zero, right? And then to interpret this, uh, it's like this. Again, divergence gives you uh, uh, the measure of how much this vector uh, uh, flux is generated at a given point, right? So uh, like in this case, uh, vector, you can see, you can obviously see the generation of a vector field at point P. So divergence of A is positive. And here, uh, the vector field is basically uh, annihilated at the point. So you have a negative uh, uh, divergence. And then here, there's nothing. You have exactly same amount of generation uh, and annihilation. So you have um, zero. So there's no generation or annihilation happening. And, and in this case, uh, divergence of A equals zero, you call it as a solenoidal field. This is just a, how you call it. Okay, so how to use it in, in physics or in electromagnetism? Um, divergence connects the force field and its source. So what I mean is that uh, take an example of gravitational field. So everyone knows that mass creates gravitational force, right? So if you have a, so this is a mass density. So this uh, rho m is a mass density. And then uh, you have a diver, uh, diverging gradient uh, uh, gravitational force field. So let's say you have an earth here and you have gravitational force field like this, which kind of makes sense, right? And then because you have a negative sign, it's, it's not diverging, but it's kind of uh, attracting. And similarly, uh, uh, in our subject, electric field is generated by charges, electric charges. So if the electric charge has positive sign, then like in this case, electric field is created in, gen in, in diverging manner. And then uh, if your charge has negative sign, then electric field uh, is annihilated at the point of charges, uh, charges position, right? So in that sense, divergence connect uh, the field, electric field, and its source, which is charge. Okay, so um, any question so far? Any, anything related uh, with the interpretation uh, of this or mathematical derivation, like whatever is a uh, question is fine. If you have anything, just let me know. So once you uh, pass this point, uh, we will uh, just learn uh, about curl. So this is probably your last chance to ask about divergence if you don't have anything, uh, don't understand. Okay, so leave your question in the chat box. If you have any, uh, I'll just move on. So uh, the second thing uh, that we want to learn uh, today uh, is curl. Oh, okay. So Lee sang asks an, an interesting question about uh, this. Uh, here. 
So he asks about uh, what about uh, what about the vector components that is passing, uh, you know, that is passing uh, at the can I say the the corner of the uh, cube. Well, this is an interesting question, but like you know, uh, it's everything is is um, you can you should compare everything uh, uh, in terms of order of magnitude, right? So if um, you know the the amount of vector component that is passing through this corner is of course infinitesimally smaller than uh, uh, compared to the uh, the vector field passing through the surface, right? So um, you you can you can ignore it. It's kind of a uh, simple logic. And then Chong Yun O asks: Then divergence of B equals zero means that magnetic field is solenoidal. Yes, exactly uh, true. So uh, yeah, so you know you probably know about this this equation divergence of B is zero is one of the Maxwell's equations, right? And that means there's no magnetic, of course that means the magnetic field is solenoidal. And at the same time, there's no magnetic charge, right? If there was magnetic charge, then there should be something like this, something, I don't know, some, some, uh, some magnetic charge, right? And then you can magnetic field can be created from the charge or annihilated uh, by the negative charge, but there's nothing like that, right? So uh, divergence of B zero means there's no magnetic charge and we have only electric charge. Both are uh, very nice questions. So now uh, we move on to curl, right? So, uh, I guess you are familiar with this definition, the Cartesian coordinate definition, right? Curl of A is equal to AX, AY, a determinant equation, right? And this again is only true for Cartesian coordinate. If you go to spherical coordinate or cylindrical coordinate systems, this definition uh, fails, okay? And, and this is the coordinate independent uh, description. And here you can see the curl of A is equal to, uh, you have a line integral in the numerator and the denominator you have uh, delta S, okay? So you can, if you compare this with the previous equation, previous definition of this, you have a surface integration and then in the denominator, you have delta V, right? And then dimensions, each dimensions has been reduced to this, right? You have a surface integ uh, line integration instead of surface integral. And then you have a surface area instead of uh, the infinitesimal volume, right? And, and so you can, I think you can find the similarity uh, in, in, in terms of definition. But there's of course some differences here too. So um, like, like this, uh, curl of A of course is a vector, right? Whereas divergence of A was a scalar. So in order to define cur curl of A, you have to define all three components. Right, curl of A, so X component of the curl of A, Y component, Z component. And then that is addressed uh, like by this AN. So again, A, uh, small letter A is designated for a unit vector. So AN can be AX, AY, AZ, right? So if AN was AX, then uh, this equation uh, now becomes curl of A, X component is equal to limit, like uh, the later part are, are basically the same, right? Then there should be some relation between a n, delta s, and dl, right? The relation between delta s and l, l are 
kind of a trivia because if you define like let's say this is your point and then if you define this as your s area s delta s then l of course is its boundary right so it's like a closed loop is l okay then how how does this a n and delta s and t and l are related there should be, there should be related they, they should be related right because because as you set the direction then uh, your delta s and l should be uh set accordingly so they should be related so how they related is like this um the area i'm sorry uh the um the surface, uh, so an is the surface uh, normal vector of this infinitesimal area delta s. Okay, so let's say uh, you have delta s like this. Then you have two choices of an. You have this or the other way around. Right, and this ambiguation occurs because your ds is now not a closed surface. This is just a random surface, right? Random small surface. It's not. It does not form any closed uh, um, volume. So, a n. There's no inside or outside in this case. So there's ambiguity. You have uh, two choices of a n. Right. Then which which choice is correct? That definition is connected to your choice of L here. Okay, so if you look at L, which is the uh, boundary of the the surface, you can choose either this direction or that direction. Right, there are two choices then you circle around the boundary. So this choice and the choice of uh, surface vector are connected by right-hand rule. So if you choose a n to be this direction, then you must choose your L direction to be this because they are connected by right-hand rule. And then if you want to choose your a n direction uh, to be the downward, then your uh, your surface, I mean, uh, your um, closed loop path should take this direction. Okay, so their definitions are connected by right hand rule. So everything's clear now uh, uh, regarding the definition, right? You you understand what I'm talking about, right? So this, you now have a surface, infinitesimal surface. And, uh, and then you can take always the closed loop and cl closed loop means you have a direction like clockwise, counterclockwise. And that definition is defined, uh, I'm saying connected to the choice of surface normal vector, uh, the choice of surface normal vector, right? By, by right and rule. So you can see uh, this in the next uh, derivation, like, here also we'll see, uh, we'll show the uh, equivalence between the Cartesian coordinate definition and the coordinate independent definition. So let's do this. You, uh, so for now, uh, let's set a n to be a x, okay? Which means uh, we want to evaluate just X component of curl of A. And because we set, so this is X direction, because we set X as our surface normal vector that automatically determines your path integral direction by right hand row. So your path integral should be performed in counterclockwise direction, right? Because, because you set uh, uh, this A as AX. Okay, now 
uh, when you calculate this align integral, you have A, B, C, D. And then uh, for simplicity, also let's do just A, B, and, uh, a, B and C, D. So we just want to do this and that. Okay. And then uh, A dot DL. So here DL for A, B component. As a DL is just a dy multiplied by ay, right? So the, the, the direction is ay direction, and then the amount is dy. So dy, ay. And because DL is having y direction, you only need to take ay component because you have a dot product here. So you need to evaluate ay at the center of this uh, line. The center of this line is of course x0, y0, z0 minus dy, uh, minus dz divided by two, because this is about dz divided by two, right? So you multiply this and then you get this. And similarly, if you do the same thing for this side, now uh, the direction of integral is flipped. So you have a minus sign and then you have to evaluate a at this position so you have positive sign rather than negative uh, d, uh, d, dz, dy, uh, dz divided by two. So if you add them up, you have this equation. And then here the same, you, you multiply dz here, divide dz in front, and you can see uh, the upper part is nothing but negative partial y, partial, partial a, y, partial z, right? And similarly, if you do the same thing for these two uh, lines, uh, you can get uh, d, a, z, d, y, d, y, d, z. So if you add everything up, this integration is equal to this. And then, of course, delta S, the area is, is dy dz. So if you divide by dy dz, these two cancel each other out. And you have this. And then this uh, is just an x component of this determinant equation. If you look at the x component, like if you do this, then, then you realize that this is an x component of the determinant equation. So uh, the derivation itself is basically uh, very similar, right? Uh, if you understand how you define the integration direction and uh, the, um, the direction of the surface, um, it's basically the same. But if you have any question, please, uh, please ask. I just want to do a quick struggle. How many of you uh, have no problem in understanding what I'm just talking? How many? How many uh, have no problem following this lecture? Okay, okay. At, at least the majority is following the lecture. That's nice. Okay, so um, for those who do not understand what I'm talking about, uh, you can just tr try to ask your uh, question now or at the end of the class when I hold the office hour, or uh, you can use the Q&A uh, page in KLMS website. But the best way I think is just, um, you know, ask questions now so that I can give you more detailed answer. It's not that difficult, right? It's just, uh, if you follow, carefully follow the definition, you can easily show uh, the correspondence between two definitions. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because this is useful when you learn uh, the divergence and curl in other coordinate systems, like non-trivial coordinate systems, like spherical coordinate systems or cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so Fakri asks, 
what should we do if we want to prove for general a n vector? This is also a, a very good question. But actually, you know what? You don't need to worry about a general a n vector because uh, we can do this. We can do this uh, um, uh, pr uh, proof for a x, a y, and a z, right? And and that's straightforward. And once and and we, we are talking about three dimensional vector space. If we prove uh, anything in a x and a y and a z, then uh, any uh, any a n vector is just a linear combination of these. So uh, it you know that means. Uh, if you do, if you prove this in x y x y z direction, and that then that's it. it it's proved in in all direction. Okay, so what does curl equals zero mean? Uh, that I will uh, probably address. This is a good question, and and that will I will address in later in the in this class. Okay, so if there's no other question, uh, let's move on and try to answer. Okay, Im Doyon asks, uh, uh, is this right-hand rule is kind of uh, uh, agreed by everyone? Y yes, uh, it's, it's widely uh, accepted definition. So you don't need to worry about uh, this definition. Okay, so the interpretation. Um, if you have, say, uh, you have a vector p, a uh, point p, and uh, you want to, let's say you want to evaluate this integral, line integral. Okay, let's try to do it, this one. So this is your point p, and then you, if you want to try to do the line integral, uh, you know that this surface and that surface are useless, right? Because the, the direction of the surface I'm sorry, that I'm, uh, it, this line and that line uh, does not contribute to the line integral because the direction of the line and the direction of a vector field are perpendicular. So there is no contribution. And the only contribution uh, uh, occurred by the top and the bottom line. On the top line, uh, let's say uh, we are talking about uh, this in, uh, integration. Then on the top line, uh, vector direction and the line direction, path direction are parallel. So it gives you positive contribution. But in the bottom line, you have exactly same amount of contribution, but it's in opposite sign, right? Because they're they are in opposite direction. So in this case, you have curl of A zero. And then here too, if you want to calculate uh, curl of A in this case, in at every position of this uh, this uh, line, the direction of uh, of this vector field is perpendicular, like everywhere, right? So you get zero. But here in this case, if you take your uh, line integral line like this. Okay, and then uh, and then if you, by the way, the fact that you set your line integral along this direction means that by right hand rule your a n is in this direction, right? The the um, pointing toward the monitor. So then you can see uh, for along the the path. The direction of vector and the direction of line in uh, line segment are parallel everywhere, so you you have a positive uh, contribution, right? That positive contribution. So uh, you have uh, curl of a positive, assuming that you define, uh, yeah, you define uh, the direction uh, to the to this direction, and here similarly, uh, if you if you try to calculate 
you can see some rotation going on. So you have non-zero uh, uh, curl. So, right. So this is basically uh, the, uh, gives you some sense, like what are the divergence and what are the curl. So in this case, no field is generated or annihilated and nothing is rotating. So both of these are zero. And in this case, nothing's rotating, but uh, you have creation of the field. So divergence is non-zero, but curl is zero. And then uh, here you have no creation, but field are just rotating. So divergence is zero, but curl is non-zero. And finally, in this case, uh, you can see that the field is diverging, like the field is created from this point. And at the same time, it's rotating uh, clockwise. So if you evaluate uh, divergence and curl, you, you will get uh, both are non-zero. Okay. So the geometric interpretation is that wherever you have a circulation of the field, your curl becomes non-zero, right? And then uh, from the direction of your curl, you know uh, in which direction your field is circulating. So that's the, uh, that's kind of a geometric interpretation. Okay, so then uh, how to use curl in physics. So usage, in, if you look at the usage in physics, um, especially in electromagnetism, uh, curl connects mag uh, magnetic vector potential to the uh, B field, the magnetic field, okay? But more importantly, uh, curl also connects B field, magnetic field to its source, which is current. But the difference is that if you look at the electric field, electric field, the source of electric field is charges. And then electric field is generated by diverging manner, like in this figure. But in case of B field, which is created by current J, the B field is not created by a diverging manner, but it's created by rotating manner. So if you have a current by right hand row, your B field is created in, in this rotating uh, form. Right, so in order to describe this phenomena, curl is ideal, right? Curl of B is equal to mu zero J. J is current, B is B field, magnetic field, okay? So you realize that these curl and divergence and gradients, all these operators are very important uh, and, and, and very directly connected uh, to what we are gonna learn in electromagnetism. So you should be very familiar with its geometric interpretation and how to evaluate this too. So uh, this is an exercise uh, of like um, getting divergence and curl, but let's not, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna give you like three minutes, but let's try to do it, uh, you know, right now. So uh, the first field, A1 is three AX, which means at every position, vector has the same direction, AX direction. And at every position, it has the same magnitude like this. So what would be the curl and divergence of this case? Can, can anyone uh, type in? the answer, like in this case, what would be the divergence and curl? Zero and zero, right? It's uh, right, thank you, thank you. So it's at both zero, right? Nothing's generating, generated, nothing is rotating. What about this case? Divergence and curl, both zero or if something is non-zero, which one is non-zero? Okay, two, okay, good. 
yeah, people actually, okay, good, thank you. So divergence is non-zero. Obviously it's kind of diverging, right? And then, but there's no rotation. So rotate, rotation is zero. And then this one, you, you know the answer, right? There's no, no uh, divergence, but there's a rotation. So you can definitely see uh, there is a, a curl, non-zero curl. And in this case, what's the direction of a curl? Can, can anyone say uh, in the chat box, what's the direction of a curl? Let's say this is X and this is Y direction. And what's the direction of, a, of the curl? Positive curl, positive Z, right? Right, that's right, that's right. So um, I guess uh, that if you can do this, at least you understand uh, these con concepts uh, and you have a geometric interpretation and you know the mathematical uh, uh, definitions. So you're ready to, uh, to perform an exercise uh, problem like homework problems. Okay, so finally, uh, before I uh, finish today's lecture and, and take questions, uh, I just give you uh, just this, this thing, the Laplacian. So Laplacian uh, is not, nothing new. La Laplacian uh, is just a, a, a divergence of a gradient, okay? And people write it as uh, this, uh, del operator squared. So uh, Laplacian uh, of a scalar field V is uh, defined like this, right? Uh, second order derivative, second order partial derivative along x direction plus second order partial derivative along y direction, second order partial derivative along z direction, and then add them up. So divergence of a curl, I'm sorry, diver divergence of a gradient. And Laplacian of a vector field, uh, you, can, uh, you can similarly uh, define. And in this case, uh, Laplacian operator is applied to each component of, uh, uh, of a vector field. And then usage in physics is trivial because, uh, because divergence, divergence connects a force field and their source and the gradient connects force field and the scalar potential. If you use both divergence and gradient, then it connects potential to its source. You see what I mean? Like grad, uh, divergence connects uh, field to the source and then gradient connects uh, potential to the field. So if you do this, apply both, then uh, the Laplacian connects the source to the potential, scalar potential. And then this equation is actually called a Poisson equation, which uh, is, uh, is, is a very famous equation in electromagnetism that you will learn. Okay, there's one question. Uh, Kang Yung asks, uh, when you write Raplacian, uh, do we need to write uh, a vector, uh, vector, vector sign uh, above the del operator, um, you don't need to, I mean, uh, in general, you don't need to put a, a vector sign on the del, del operator. So, and then uh, especially Laplacian, people typically don't use uh, the, the vector sign, but even like in, in other cases, like, like curl or divergence, uh, this uh, arrow sign is not necessary. So you don't need to uh, you don't need to put it. Okay, so is there any other question? I promise you that I uh, try to finish the lecture within one hour, but it's already two o seven. It's a little past uh, two o'clock. So I'd like to finish if there's okay. There's a question. Um, Hong Wangi asks, uh, okay, he has a question about the curl part.
Oh. That is a really, really good question. Uh, Hong Wangi asks about uh, an, a very interesting question. Uh, and interesting question. So he, what he asked is, is that uh, about the potential and the force field. So like in gravitational uh, field or the electric electrostatic field, you know that uh, like, like this, right? So the uh, gradient of scalar potential is the vector field. And then this, the same thing applies to uh, the, uh, the gravitational field. But his question is why not magnetic field, right? Maybe uh, we can define some magnetic scalar potential and then by taking the gradient, we can get the magnetic field, right? But instead we do, we, do, uh, we have a vector potential A and then taking a curl in order to get my magnetic field. This is very different from uh, how we define electric, how we uh, define electric potential. And, uh, and that there is, of course, there's a region and uh, I can probably answer this question in the next lecture because next lecture actually contains uh, that kind of information. So uh, I'll probably answer this question in the next lecture. And uh, is there any other question? But this question itself is really good. Uh, uh, please ask again uh, if uh, your, you know, uh, the next lecture does not resolve your question. Any other question?